Hello, so today I'll be showing you how you could make some liquid drips that flow down our object in Houdini and I'll be showing you how you could export this as an animation and then I import it to Cinema 4D for rendering. So let's get started. Alright, so let's create a geo node and we'll dive in and uh, put in a file. I'm going to be importing this uh, skull model that I found on 3D warehouse. So we'll go ahead and add a scatter node over here so that we can scatter some points on top of our geometry. So here I'm changing some values and this will be the starting point, the origin for our drips. So I'm going to be uh, selecting just a small portion of the skull on top so that we have our origin on top. Now we'll be adding an attribute triangle and I'm going to be adding this simple expression at id equal to at ptnum. This will come in handy later on once we want to convert these points to lines. Next up, we'll be making a gradient descent. So in essence, what this does is that we, in a way, tell Houdini to guide these points to the lowest part of our skull. So in a way, we are making a fake gravity. So we'll go ahead and add an attribute triangle over here. And I'm going to be initializing a variable py. This is a float value. And we'll, we'll be storing the negative y axis of our points from the skull. So this is going to be directing our points downwards in the negative y axis. So we'll be adding a VDB from polygons node and um, and make sure the unassigned distance field is checked. Also you can increase the exterior band voxels for a more accurate result. And we'll be adding an attribute here that we just made in the previous node that is PY and give it a custom name down. Also decrease the voxel size. For this purpose, I'm going to be decreasing to 0.07, but uh, you, I recommend you go ahead and decrease it even further. So next up, we'll be adding a VDB analysis. So this is so that it calculates our gradient that's going to be directing our points downwards. In the operator set, make sure it's set to gradient and uh, select the group down. Uh, also, we can give it a custom name here, force, but uh, you can go ahead and give it any custom name. Uh, we'll be adding another VDP analysis node here and uh, we can set the operator type to closest point. So what this is going to do is it's going to generate voxels that uh, store the nearest uh, point location of, our, of the skull. Uh, we can use this later on to reproject our points that we generate as drips back to the skull. So we can uh, set the group to surface and uh, custom name we can give it as close. And uh, just to show you what the surface looks like, this is what our surface looks like. It's uh, if you add a default VDB from polygons, you can see it looks like that. So let's go add in a solver. So this is going to be generating the points that flow downwards. And uh, let's connect our scatter, scatter points and our VDB analysis nodes into the solver. So Let's go ahead and uh, merge the previous frame and the input one, that is the scatter points. We'll be adding a VDB advec nodes and let's go ahead and connect the scatter and the velocity and the close points into the VDB advec. And for velocity, we can choose force and for closest point, we can choose close and uh, set the operation type to constraint advection. And we can give it the iterations of two and set the time step to 0.1. So, if we hit play and make sure it's set to real time playback and uh, we can see that we get some points that float downwards. So before moving to the next step, I wanted to show you that um, our points are kind of going down in a linear way. We don't have much variation in the velocity of them. That is um, the speed of the points are always constant no matter if the surface is flat or you know vertical so to give it some uh, more realistic looking effects we'll be using something called as a dot product and uh, here i have an example to show you we have a sphere so here we have two vectors one is yellow that is facing up and we have another blue vector that is uh, facing in the direction of the normals from each point so as far as so as far as i understand it what the dot product does is that it's going to multiply both of these vectors taking the angles between them into consideration so here we can see that the vectors that are facing um, closer to each other that is on the top are colored in red and uh, as we gradually go down we can see that the angle between them increases and they are no longer closer to each other and uh, this gives us a gradient from red to black 
So here I'm changing the value for the yellow vectors and you can see the gradient also gets affected according to the uh, you know change in values. So we can use this to our advantage to create a mask in Houdini that will uh, affect our velocity of the trips. So to do that we'll go ahead and add in an attribute warp and inside this attribute warp let's go in and uh, add in a dot product. Uh, also a dot product gives us a float value at the output so we'll go in, we are going to connect uh, the normals and the constant over here into the dot and we'll export this to a bind and name it as dot and uh, set the constant to vector since we need two vectors for this uh, process and set the y to 1. Now it's going to be now as you can see when we visualize this it's going to be masking out the areas that are flat so on the top of the skull you could see it's red and uh, on the bottom part of the you know eye socket it's also red it means that the areas there are flat so it's going to mask out those areas and uh, but the thing is we also want to affect the velocities that are on these areas that is the jawline so we want the point, we want the drips to get slow over there also. So we can go back into the attribute warp and add in a simple absolute node. So it's going to solve that issue. So we'll, so we'll add a volume wrangle over here and we'll be just multiplying the force that we already have from the VDB analysis uh, with the dot product that we just got. And uh, I'm giving the expression CFH speed and CFH drag. Uh, this is so that we get sliders over here once we press that button. Uh, also in the VDB from polygons node we have to add in the attribute dot that we made and give it a VDB name dot or whichever name you want. So coming back with these sliders we can affect the speed and the drag of the points. So now if I hit play you could see that something changes and uh, it's not really giving, it, giving us a correct result because whichever area is uh, more vertical it's flowing slower compared to the more flatter area so we have to invert the dot product so we can go back to the attribute warp and uh, inverse our values so we can do that by adding a subtract node over here and uh, we'll negate it by one so make sure you have the float value set to one in the constant and now if we hit play we can see that the areas that are flat uh, the drips are much slower and the areas that are more you know vertical they flow faster So we can go ahead and add in an add node and we can use this to convert our points back to points to lines. So in the polygons tab you can choose by group and uh, in the add function we can choose by attribute and uh, we can give the attribute name id. So if you remember we initialized this attribute in the beginning that is in the attribute triangle. We can uh, resample these uh, points by adding a resample node check the curve view attribute uh, this will come in handy later once we want to add thickness to our drips so next up we'll be going ahead and adding attribute warp and we'll go ahead and add some uh, randomness to our lines uh, right now i feel the lines are a bit too smooth and uh, we'll give them some wiggle uh, so we'll add some noise over here Make sure the signature is set to 3D noise and you can play around with the noise settings. We'll add them, we'll add the noise back to the original points uh, with an add node and uh, now we'll give some thickness to our lines. So make sure we bind the curve view that will import the curve view values from the previous node, uh, the, the resample node and we'll feed that into the ramp. So with this we can control the thickness of our lines. So we can go ahead and add in a multiply node now and uh, we can use this to scale down or uh, you know scale up the thickness of our drips. Also we'll promote the constant by middle clicking on the input and uh, this will help us uh, change the value of the constant on the surface operation level so we don't have to dive in back to the attribute warp every time. Uh, we can go ahead and uh, export this using a bind export and uh, we can give it the name p scale. So the p scale refers to the point scale so we can directly affect the point scale uh, using the ramp we can go ahead and add a VDP analysis node and we'll connect the points to the first input and we'll connect the velocity to the second and the closest points back to the third and uh, set the groups of the velocity VDP to force and uh, the closest point to the close and uh, make sure 
the operation is said to constrain advection. Uh, so we are doing this because um, we added some noise to our lines in the attribute verb. So we have to reproject them back to the surface. So we'll go ahead and add a poly wire so that we can give some uh, we can give polygons to our lines right now. And we can go ahead and in the wire radius, we can set the attribute at P scale. So this is going to refer to our P scale values that we set in the attribute warp. So right now we are not seeing anything happening. So we can go back to the attribute warp and uh, just select that and we can play around with the settings that we uh, made in the warp. So here I'm trying to replicate that uh, drip kind of shape. So after that, we can go ahead and add a smooth node. So if you are getting some uh, jagged lines in the you know drips, you can go ahead and uh, smoothen it out using this node. So let's go ahead and connect our skull to the normal node over here. This is so that we can generate some normals on our uh, points on the skull. Make sure the add normals to is set to points and uh, we can go ahead and add a VDB from polygons. Now this is going to store our uh, normal values in the voxels over here. So we can add the attribute n that was generated in the previous node normals and we can give it a custom VDB name like uh, dir and make sure the vector type is set to gradient slash normal and uh, we can increase the exterior band voxels and the interior band, band voxels to something uh, of a higher number so that we get a more you know, accurate uh, result. Uh, also you can increase decrease the voxel size but I'm not doing it here. So we can go ahead and add a attribute delete over here and we'll delete the point attribute p scale. This is so that we can give a new p scale value for our trails because we want them to you know, look differently. So we can copy and paste our uh, attribute warp that we used for the drips. So we can reuse them to make a different thickness for our uh, trails. So I'll play around with the ramp and uh, generate a different p scale value. Uh, so we can go ahead and add an attribute from volume here and we can use this to extract the normals value that we stored in the voxels and we can apply them to the points. So we will connect the points to the left input and the VDB to the right input and inside the node we can go ahead and change the attribute name to DIR and the volume name also to DIR. This is to point to the volume that we want to transfer the information from change the attribute type to vectors and uh, we can go ahead and add an attribute triangle over here and we can give the simple expression at n equal to v at dir so what this will do is that it will tell the points to derive the normals uh, from the attribute dir that we have set so if i enable the normal visualization over here we can see that our points are facing exactly outwards so we can add a circle over here and we can use this to sweep on our uh, lines make sure the primitive type is set to polygon and we can connect it to a sweep so we can see that we get some sort of a result but we have to align our circles facing downwards so we can go ahead uh, reduce the radius if you like and uh, rotate it downwards by 90 degrees so they are facing down right now so that's correct so in the sweep so also in the sweep uh, make sure you go into the output tab and make sure the skin output is set to skin unclosed so this is going to stitch all of our uh, circles circles together and give this mesh um, now we can, so it's still facing in the wrong direction, so we can go back into the circle and change the rotation to 90. So if you're finding something weird, you can uh, definitely do change the rotation of that and play around with the settings. Now we can go ahead and add a normal to fix our uh, shading issues. And uh, first adding a VDB from Polygon, make sure the voxel size is set to something low. And uh, we can add a VDB convert node and make sure the convert to is set to a polygons. So I want to demonstrate something. So for that, I'll be merging the trails, the drips and uh, the skull together. So we can see here that we get some artifacts around the nasal cavity. Drips and the trails kind of go through the mesh. And also on the top of the eye ridge, we can see that uh, drips also go through them. So to fix this, it's pretty simple. We can go back to the VDB from polygons, not all the way in the top that we used to generate the gradient. And uh, we can reduce the voxel size over here to something low. And as you can see, that fixes our issue. So now we can export the trails. So for that, we'll add an attribute create and we'll create the name trails. And uh, we'll set all the values at the end to one. So we can do the same to drip. So we can copy paste the same node and change the name to drip or any name you like. 
Also, so if we go, so if we go ahead and middle click on the attribute create node over here, we can see that we have five point attributes that are that we really don't need. We only need our drip attribute and our p attribute that is the position. So we can go ahead and delete uh, the rest of these uh, attributes using attribute delete. Uh, the reason we don't need them is because um, it's going to add up on our file size once we export them as an alembic. So here now we can see that we only have two point attributes. So let's go ahead and uh, export them. So before that, let's merge our uh, drips and trails. We can add a normal node over here to fix any final shading issues that we might have. And we'll plug it into a ROP Alembic node. So we'll change it to render frame range so that we can render it out as an animation. And uh, I'll right click and uh, delete the channel over here so that we can give it a custom end range. And we can go and we can save the file by clicking on that button. Make sure you add the .abc extension at the end. And once we are done, we can go ahead and save it to disk. So in Cinema 4D, we can go ahead and import our mesh that we just exported. So for this purpose, I'm going to be importing the mesh that I used for the intro for the tutorial. And here we can see we have the two vertex tags that uh, we got by setting those attributes at the end in Houdini. So we can use these vertex attributes to make different uh, shaders. So as you can see, I'm setting up some lights and uh, I'm going to be adding also dome light. So I'm just only going to be showing the basics on how to set up the scene. So we can add in, a, so I'm going to be also using Redshift, but this can be also done in any other renderers. Uh, so we'll be adding a vertex attribute node over here in Redshift and we can just drag and drop them into our attribute name. So that's going to be, you know, kind of a mask for our um, shaders or colors if you're going to apply. We can go ahead and add a color layer and I'll be giving it some colors over here. So we can go ahead and plug it plug any of these um, vertex at attributes to our layer mask and um, depending on what you connect it's going to be affecting the drips and trails so here you can see that our drips are red in color and if i change it to something else we can see that gets updated so that is the basic uh, rendering tutorial in uh, cinema 4d so that's pretty much the tutorial so if you have some doubts or uh, clarifications that you need you can comment them down below i'll uh, try answering them also you can message me on instagram at the roshnik so i'll see you in the next tutorial take care